Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Linda. Here on this channel, I share videos about sewing, pattern drafting, and everything fashion. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to draft this beautiful top we drafted the last time. So, if this seems like what you're interested in, you might definitely want to hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's just dive into the main video. So, guys, stick around to the last video I posted. I've already gone ahead to cut out my patterns on my actual fabric. Setting the patterns aside, I'm going to be working on each fabric individually. So now the first thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and remove my actual fabric from my lining piece. So you can see that I've done the same thing I did for my actual fabric on my lining piece. Now I'm also going to set this aside and now for the cups, I'll go ahead and remove my lining piece and also set it aside together with the lining, the other ones. And you can see that I already went ahead to add my estate on the wrong side of both the lining and the main fabric. So starting now, the first thing I'm going to be doing is to arrange the cups just as according to how I cut it on my pattern paper and you can see me pairing and matching up the pattern just the way they should be. So it's very important for you to take note of which pattern belongs to which side of the pattern, okay? Next I'll just go ahead and place it right side to right side facing each other and then I'll go ahead and stitch it on the machine just like this and I'll also go ahead and repeat the same thing for the other cup. Heading back to the front piece, I'll go ahead and open it up like this and then the next thing I'll be doing is to insert my channels for my boning. So I'm going to be using my bias strip to do that. For this I'll be using a white bias that stands out because my fabric is already multicolored. So now I'll be placing one in the middle like this and then I'm just going to stitch it down and then I'll place one in a parallel line like this and stitch it down as well and then do the same thing for the opposite sides. There are going to be measurements for this okay. So I'll be placing one as well on this side. So now I'll just go ahead and mark the chalk line around this part for the basque i want to reduce it so i'll be taking in two inches okay and then i'll be cutting out the rest so i'll just go ahead and mark a chalk line to carve out the excesses i'll also go ahead and do the same thing for the lining piece Now this is what I have after I was done trimming out my excess um, fabric. Now next thing I'll be doing is just to go ahead and stitch my bias strip on the top and work on the cup. This is what I have after I was done stitching the cups. The next thing I did was just to go ahead and iron it out with my tailor's ham and also secure the rough edges with an stay. Of course I did the same thing for the other part. So I'll be placing my bias strip to design my cup right now. So I'm just going to be designing it in form of three parts cup. So I'll be measuring two inches downwards in the middle like this, just like this. And then I'll be marking it out and also going towards the side, I'll be measuring another two inches like this. And then I'll also go ahead on the opposite sides and mark another two inches like you see me doing. And then after I was done marking the measurements, I went ahead to roll the line to connect it like this. This is going to be helping me divide the cup into a three-part cup. You can actually go ahead and cut it out and then replace it with one long fabric in that same form for the top. That is going to be your three-part cup. Now I am adding my bias strip to design it. I don't want to share the cup. To be professional, I'll go ahead and place this part first of all and then before working on the top one. So just follow the middle line like this and then stitch it down first of all and also go ahead and place this one on top of the line to cover up the rough edges for the initial one and I'll also go ahead and do the same thing for the other part. So guys, I already marked a chalk line in the middle just to start with the measurements for my boning casing and then I'll just go ahead and measure 3.25 inches on the right and 3.25 inches on the left like this and the next thing I'll be doing is just to go ahead and mark 1.5 at the lower part like this on both sides of the line. So this is going to help me to place my diagonal line and then mark it out. So now I am done with the diagonal lines. The next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and start from this point and draw another line like this and then draw the opposite one as well. And I'm just going to check what I have at the lower part to see if it is corresponding with the opposite side. I have 6 inches there and I also have 6 inches for the opposite side. So guys I'll be stitching the bias strip on these lines off camera and then I'll get back to you. This is what I have after I was done stitching the bias strip on the lines. So these bias strips are going to become a channel for my boning to pass through. I have also gone ahead to add my wording on the bust here. So this is what it looks like. I have a tutorial on how to do this on my channel. And I also have several videos I did the same thing. So I'm sorry I didn't capture that on camera initially. I didn't know my camera wasn't recording. So now the next thing I'll be doing is just to go ahead and place the back piece like this. Just like you see me doing. 
and I also added a channel for my boning on the back piece, one on each side close to the center back. So I'm just going to stitch it this way. I'll be measuring what I have. So I'll be taking out my initial stitching allowance I added. So I added about 1.5 inches and I'm just going to take that away by rolling a line to illustrate that. And also go ahead and do the same thing for this part. So now this is how it will look like after I was done stitching it. After I was done stitching it, I went ahead to trim out the excess fabric on both sides and then also notch that part of the waistline so it can give my client a better fitting. So whatever I'm doing for the actual fabric, I'm going to be repeating the same thing on the lining part. Okay, now this is how it looks like after I was done stitching the sides and now I'm going to be matching it up with the lining part like this, right side to right side facing each other. I'll go ahead and adjust it to my liking and make sure there are no folds on both the lining and the actual fabric. Okay. And the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and stitch it up at the top by 0.5 inch just like this. This is what I have after I was done stitching it at the top and this is how it looks like. So the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and notch it up with my scissors. After notching it up, I'll go ahead and top stitch it on the lining part. To top stitch on it, I'll place it this way, wrong side facing on the table and then I'll run a stitch like this towards the lining part. So I'll just go ahead and do that on the machine and then I'll get back to you. So guys this is what I have and this is how it looks like after I was done top stitching on it and then I also went ahead to press it a little bit. So in order to prevent the lining from picking out at the front, I'll go ahead and insert my hemming gum in the center like this, just like this, in between the middle. When doing this, you would have to be very careful and patient as well so as to avoid burning your fabric or burning yourself. So just go ahead and place it this way and hold it in place before pressing. This is what it looks like after I was done pressing everything and this, you can see how clean and neat it is looking like. You can see that there is no form of lining picking out whatsoever. So now the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and insert my boning through the bias channel I created. To insert the boning, I'll go ahead and cover the tip like this with my masking tape just to prevent discomfort when the client is putting it on. So now I'll just go ahead and wrap it up with my masking tape and also go ahead and do the same thing at the lower part when after I am done cutting it up. So now after inserting it, I'll make sure that it fits very well and then before I'll cut it up, I'll go ahead and measure one inch away from the lower part like this so that it won't break my needle when I'll be hemming it. After trimming it off, I'll go ahead and wrap it up with my masking tape. And I'll also make sure to do the same thing for the other casings. So guys, after I was done inserting the boning, the next thing I'll be doing is just to flip it to the wrong side like this and give it a very good press. Next, I'll open it up like this to hem it at the lower part. So I'll just go ahead and bring the two sides together like this, right side to right side facing each other and then stitch it and also stitch the other end like this. After I was done stitching, this is how it looks like and then I'll just go ahead and notch it up and also turn it inside out. When turning this, it's best to take it easy and gradual so that you wouldn't rip your fabric apart. There is no need to rush it because it is very stressful and not easy at all. Sorry about that. So this is how it looks like. The next thing I'll be doing is just to go ahead and fold this part by half of an inch inwards. I'll be maintaining half of an inch for the fold like this just to close it and secure my loops in between that part. I'll be pressing it this way with my iron and also I'll be repeating the same thing for the other side. So just a reminder, if you want to insert your boning into your casing, don't make it face upwards like this. Just give it a little bit curve, okay? You can see that these parts are facing up and then just in the middle it bends inwards. So this is what I have for the sides which I have folded by half of an inch and this is how the other part looks like. I did the same thing there and the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and secure my loops inside. I'll be stitching it inwards like this in this form. There are different ways to attach your loops. You can choose to use this method or you can just cut it up and attach it individually. So the next thing I did was to measure the length which I want each loop to fit into and I'm just marking 1.5 inch on each loop. This is going to enable me to stitch my loops continuously until I get to the end. And I also go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So this is how it looks after I was done stitching the loop twice and this is how beautiful my top looks like. Okay guys, now I went ahead to cut out a long rectangular fabric for the sleeve so I have about 10 inches here for the length and then for the width I have 45 inches long so if you want you can go ahead and make it 40 inches but I am making one full I'm using one full length for the Ankara print and that is why it is 45 inches so now I've gone ahead to fold the top and also the down part by 0.5 inches and I also went ahead to cut out 10 inches long elastic for the both sides and I'm just going to insert it and also do the same thing for the other sleeve as well so guys, this is how the sleeve looks like after I was done stitching it. And the next thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and stitch it at the sides of my top. So 
I'll just go ahead and place the the, the joining part on the joining part of the top as well so both parts are going to be meeting each other and I'm just going to make a stitch there and I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other sleeve as well so this is what I have after I was done with everything about this top and the last thing I'll be doing right now is just to go ahead and lace it up with my long rope I made from my bias strip and that is the end of the tutorial guys if you enjoyed this video kindly give me a thumbs up tell me what you think in the comment section and also share this video don't forget to like and tap on the notification bell for more videos like this i'll see you guys in my next video bye for now